PLC at uh, talk about uh, optimizing uh, boot time. Uh, for, it's a talk from Chris Simons. And he talk about Falcon mode, but he don't give more detail on how he do it to, to enable this feature. So I decided to, to interest to, to this, and I have to, to, to do it to, to support it for uh, the, the board of um, uh, a customer. So that's why uh, I decided to explain it. So first, uh, I will start by talking about U-Boot. Uh, I think uh, so. Everybody uh, know it. So it's uh, I, I think the number one bootloader for embedded Linux. Uh, it manages several like, architectures, uh, a lot of storage, a lot of devices. There is a lot of device driver. It's scriptable. It's a really nice tool. So yeah, uh, U-Boot developer did a great job since a long time, and uh, I, I like it. But uh, uh, I discover that uh, there is a mod in U-Boot named SPL. Uh, so SPL is for secondary program loader. That's what I found. Uh, so secondary mean, uh, mean that uh, it boots after the ROM code uh, and not uh, after you boot itself. So uh, I, I like this mode because it allow to it, it do minimal initialization first uh, of U boot uh, um, of the device. Sorry. Uh, so it allow to it, it, it was designed uh, originally to to fit in SRAM. So for tiny devices that can't uh, handle uh, big U-boot, or maybe if you, the device where the U-boot is stored uh, is not mapped directly, uh, and you need uh, to do some work. Uh, so SPL was created to, as a first stage, as we can have uh, on uh, other bootloader on uh, x86, for example. And so it's good because it is uh, faster to load a program than the standard U-boot mode. So I will uh, detail uh, uh, a bit later. And when you want to, um, to optimize boot time, it also uh, have a mode named Falcon mode, which is the, what I want to talk about today, which allow to start Linux directly. So when I say directly, is Starting Linux by bypassing uh, the U-boot script, as anyone know. Uh, so, and I will I, I will explain uh, later uh, exactly what you can do with it. So, but originally SPL is designed to boot U-boot. So the standard U-boot, you know. So with the all the script environment and, uh, and so. So. Uh, I do it really, I, I, I try to keep it really simple. So, how it works. So, uh, you have uh, the U-boot entry point. So, I showed the, um, the, um, the assembler file from, for my board, which is uh, here. It's a Riot board, or 9MX6. So, there is an entry point here. And this, in, in this file, we see that uh, we call a uh, function uh, named board init f that uh, where you, 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 in order to have SPL support, you, you have to do some initialization, like uh, the architecture initialization, a timer, or anything you, you, you need, uh, for example, RAM initialization too. So really the, um, the, the, the basic feature you need. Uh, and uh, in this function, you call the at the end the board init r function, which is a generic function from uh, the SPL mode of your boot. And uh, when 
you you call this so you you enter the all the generic codes so of SPL which uh, depending on your configuration will try to load drivers for the storage device uh, and so on it will potentially call um, a function as per board init if you need more initialization later than uh, in uh, board init f so you will have an example uh, later to 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 imagine better what it do uh, and uh, so uh, after this he saw the SPL code initialize the storage and uh, so optionally if you select the Falcon mode so you will try to find the kernel and the device tree and to boot it and uh, if it fails it will start uh, the standard U-boot image with uh, all the features uh, we know uh, so, uh, yes, in order to support uh, U-boot SPL, so you, you have to, potentially you have to do more things like this, but you need to declare some function, depending what you want to do. So I will explain uh, what do each function uh, in the example. It will be easier to, to understand when, if you see the code inside. And you also have to add some configuration. So sometime in your board configuration or in the dev config of your board, it, um, it depends. So, and, yes. and you also have to declare uh, your board. You have to add the select support SPL to be able to, to build uh, this mode for, um, for your board. Uh, so this, I will show you an example just after. I just want to talk a bit about uh, SPL uh, before. Uh, yes, and so uh, Falcon mode is a feature of the SPL. So you can use a, a Falcon mode with a standard U-boot. You need to have the SPL support to have the Falcon mode. That's why I talk a lot about uh, the SPL because finally using Falcon mode is simple once you have the support of SPL. Uh, so you need it, uh, you need the SPL support for your board, of course. Uh, this, uh, this mode, the, this Falcon mode, allowed to start Linux with few initialization. So for common projects, we, it's common to see customers coming with uh, U-boot with a lot of scripts that will try to boot from every device you can imagine. Uh, what is done, for example, for uh, a generic board uh, you, you can buy. So if you buy this one, it can have interest to boot on different device. But when you have a concrete project, you know that you will boot, for example, on MMC or, or on an AND. So all the, the, so the script feature is not really necessary. Uh, takes a few times uh, to, to, to be started. Uh, so that's why you, this Falcon mod have an interest. It's because we will be able to gain time to boot. And uh, often customers want to boot as fast as possible, sometimes faster than uh, the device can, but that's customers. So, uh, oh, yes, Falcon mode has uh, some basic features available to manage a production project for customers. So you can have a simple environment. So for example, if you want to specify the name of your kernel, of your device tree, or a few things, you can have a small env environment to get this information. So you can communicate between the user land uh, of your OS. So for example, if you do um, uh, an upgrade and you want to use a new kernel, you can just specify the new name of the kernel for the next boot. And you also have the, a feature uh, like boot count. So if you fail too much time, you can uh, have another possibility. So boot, for example, to the to the default U-boot uh, uh, environment. So I will explain uh, this uh, later too. Uh, 
so Falcon mode is really faster, so you can gain some time. I will give you some numbers uh, later, but it can be nice for some project to boot really, really faster, depending on the, what you want to do. And uh, yes, and also most of U-Boot features can be ported, so I will give you some examples, but it's possible to have a splash screen, for example, in the, in the Falcon mode. So I know that you want to boot faster and you want a, uh, a splash screen. It's not really logic, but sometimes it's a... Uh, customers want it, so we, we have to do it. And uh, thanks to the way U-Boot is designed, you can easily uh, support all the feature uh, in your boot. So I will give you an example. It's, uh, yes. And uh, once you have the SPL uh, support in your, of your board, finally uh, you, activating the Falcon mode is just uh, enabling the config SPL OS boot in, in, in your configuration file. Yes. And potentially add some other configuration like uh, the name of the kernel but uh, I will uh, show you an example, uh, co a concrete example uh, later to let you understand uh, what it is. But adding this support is more simple than we can expect because first I, uh, I think uh, booting faster can be really hard, but no, it, it, it's not. The SPL is really, really well done. The code is, uh, I, I, I think it's simple to read, really nice, so yes it's easy to, to configure to your board. Uh, yes, so Falcon mode uh, can boot fit image. Uh, you can also boot raw image. <laughs> uh, and uh, also uh, read uh, your kernel on a partition. So, so reading on partition, it's not really uh, always a good idea because the time to mount the partition can be long, but y you can do it. Uh, so it supports a lot of, um, I didn't test every single of them, I just see that there is the support in SPL, so, but I think that MMC work none too. No, I also see that there is a USB, uh, I don't know the state, but uh, yes, I think, uh, Yeah, so yes, so I didn't test them, but uh, I think, uh, yes, uh, as I see the... the for NAND, you're never supposed to put any files on your own NAND because it will just get corrupted and your system will eventually, after a couple of cycles, not boot. So you want to put UV there and then your whatever image in the UV so it is protected. Yes, yes. Uh, I understand. Yes, yes, but um, you can also, you, uh, NAND is supported, but you can uh, have a, a partition like U UBFS on it to, you, you can combine both. Not UBFS, UBFS is slightly broken in UBFS and you should not use Oh, okay, I know that. <laughs> UB is okay, okay. UBFS is getting fixed. Yeah, so okay. So. Okay. That's probably the best. Yes. Yes. And moreover, you don't uh, you don't lose time mounting a partition, so which is probably corrupted. So yes. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I hope everybody uh, have it here. Yeah. Oh, just a second, uh, Ezekiel. <laughs> Testing. Uh, I was asking Mark, do you know if 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 the uh, the UBI fits SPL entirely? I'm going to be careful because well, let's take it slow. Yes. Yeah, so
So um, the situation with uh, SPL and UB is such that. No, you talk too much. <laughs> uh, is such that uh, you need sufficient amount of RAM to build the in-memory UB structures to actually mount the UB, and we are talking about uh, megabytes, maybe tens of megabytes. So you have to have RAM running to use UB. You cannot mount UB before you have RAM running unless you have like a really a lot of static RAM. Okay. But otherwise, yes, UB SPL is in mainline U-boot and it supports the static volumes pretty much. Okay. So you can load files out yes. of it. So yes, those are. Thank you. Does not answer before the question. Well, almost. That uh, assuming you have enough S S RAM to to fit the UBI code, because well, back mean, in the day, UBI code was quite large. Right. So like, you know, you, you You're right. DRAM, then mount UB and then load your kernel from the UB into the DRAM as well and then launch it from the DRAM. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, the, the, the SPL size itself will be larger with UBI support and yeah, yeah. some SOCs have quite a, uh, a constrained Right, okay. okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so, yes, and uh, also with Falcon <laughs> mode. Um, so, as you know, uh, when you use uh, U boot, you, you have the habit to, to set the bootards to start the kernel. And so, with SPL, we need to find uh, another way to, to, to pass them. So in, in the attack, so personally, in, for my test, I use the DTB, maybe, but you can also uh, do it, put it uh, statically in the, in the kernel. So it's up to the project if you want to do this. Uh, but yes, that's important to, to have this in mind. Uh, and I think that's all about what I want to say about Falcon mode for this slide. Uh, yes, so adding SPL support uh, depends on the board, of course, and is uh, easy if SPL is already uh, supported, of course. Uh, I, I mean, it's, uh, Falcon mode is uh, easy uh, if SPL is already supported. Um, uh, so I will give you a concrete example uh, for the riot board. So this is the riot board. It's, uh, really, uh, it's an IMX6 board. Uh, so I will show you quickly what. Sorry. The. Uh. Oh. Yes. Oh. Okay. Yes, I, okay. He, he's talking about, I will, um, I will show you it. Uh, he talk about this here. Yes. Yes. Uh, sorry, I mean, the arch no, equals the arm is not required because this is derived from the board kconfig. So this is uh, completely superfluous. Okay. So uh, the cross compile is needed, though. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I just think it was uh, mandatory, but uh, I didn't uh, uh, think uh, we really just add it and. Uh, it's a new thing, so. Oh, okay, new thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yes. So I just uh, put this uh, line to see how I uh, build, uh, configure, build, and uh, test uh, the the demo for this. So I want to show you the um, the patch. Uh, so this patch, so it's around, I don't see how many lines, I can't read. So, yeah, so just to show that uh, adding the support for this board is not re really big. So more or less, there is a, the entire uh, dev config. So, oh, there is a debug, I think. 
so uh, this is the, what I do to, to be able to start a Linux kernel directly from the U-boot SPL. So uh, what I do first is um, I add the support SPL to the board. This is uh, needed just to be able to, to build SPL uh, for, for the board. Uh, then I do a small hack. So it's um, the, this line with the boot device. Oh, I have a mouse. Maybe it's better. So this, uh, this line is just a hack because uh, I'm using a USB OTG to, to develop more easily. So and uh, the IMX6, if I use this mode, detect that we, I, I'm not on the boot device MMC1 and refuse to boot on the MMC. So yes, yeah, so the, the just why I add this act, but if I flash it on the MMC directly, I don't have the, um, the problem. I also find a small uh, issue. If we use a ESP uh, uh, X file system, uh, we have a, um, a small issue uh, because we can't uh, return the MMC SD mode FS. So the, um, the board always try to, to find a raw kernel. Uh, so a kernel not in a partition, but uh, directly uh, written in the, um, on the MMC. So I, I, I plan to send it upstream uh, soon. It's just a, a small thing. But I think before, uh, when you add X, fat was uh, automatically added or something like this a uh, long time ago. This was needed for uh, compatibility reasons with some sort of obscure development kits which demanded that they want fat support because that's how they did it since forever. Uh, that's why all that code is in there and you can look up the last discussion when someone tried cleaning it up in the mailing list that's been last year. Okay, yeah. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I mean, you should do it, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and CC all the people, I mean. We uh, didn't have a flame word for a long time on the list. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, yeah, so the, that's the only issue of fun and then, uh, this is the um, so this is the mx6boards.c so the file of the riot board because the riot board is supported mainline uh, by the U-boot. So I just uh, in order to support the SPL, uh, I just have to to add a few lines of code. So just so the board init function. I uh, talked to you before. Uh, which is needed uh, here to so to get the which board we are using. So this is internal uh, of the this is needed when you if you want to use uh, MMC for this board, you need to know which one you use because there is some difference uh, in the in the code. But uh, so this is just to know if we are we, we have a riot board or the Mars board because the file manage the both code. Uh, and then we initialize the CPU in it. Uh, we also analyze, um, initialize the, the timers. Uh, also, serial support. So all the, that function all uh, used in the, um, uh, for the standard U-boot, so works fine. Uh, here we initialize some memory address I uh, don't remember exactly why, but we need to do it. <laughs> um, and uh, then we, we start the function. Oh yeah, the, the mem set there, uh, well, that should be needed, but actually it could be that the boot room somehow garbled the on-chip RAM and your BSS will be full of random data. Yes. Uh, and at that point, if you, do some sort of checks later on in the board in it R, it could access basically variables which are not zeroed out and have random data in them. Yes, and that's the case but because I, I, I tried to, to remove it and uh, the SPL mode uh, failed to read the MMC uh, for, if I just remove this line, so. Yeah, if you actually uh, let the CRT0.S handle all this memory setup, you won't need that line because it will clear the BSS for you. Okay, yeah. okay. 
Yeah. There is there is a really obscure piece of code which is initializing yes. uh, the BSS. Yeah. So. Yes, but the, um, uh, we have a problem with that line uh, with the customer. So it was uh, a few months ago, well. but uh, we see that uh, during this spend some time uh, enable caches. Yes, and uh, uh, without having uh, data cache enabled, this will be super slow. Yeah. Especially if your BSS is big. So and, and that's why we we initialize only the needed memory, you know, and we 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 can uh, gain uh, we can earn a lot of uh, boot time mm. by just uh, changing the size. So because we just uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. calculate how many size we need uh, for the the memory location. And uh, how big is your BSS? Hmm? How big is your BSS? Oh, the BSS, uh, it, uh, it's defined in the IMX uh, 6 uh, SPL, don't remember, but it can it should be for 64 kilobytes. That, that should be, I believe, calculated yeah. uh, I, during I, the build. If you want, I can... We, we should talk about that at the end. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, and then we call the... The function, this function, which is defined uh, by the the, um, the, SPL the, the SPL command code to and which which starts to to, to read uh, <coughs> MMC something and uh, all the stuff needed to to, to, to prepare to, to to start your boot or the um, or the, the kernel if we have selected the Falcon mode. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and by the way, if you actually oh, oh. just return from the board in it F, it will call that function as well, and it will also handle the SPL relocation if needed. So, so you don't need to do that explicitly. Uh, zoom, je vois pas le zoom. Là. Hmm? Control plus. Uh, yeah, control plus or con no. just hold control and scroll. Oh, <laughs> I, uh, I can scroll. <laughs> Doesn't work. No. Oh well, I too bad. Uh, uh, Doesn't matter. Here we don't have something here. No. There's a spot here. No. No. Okay. Uh, there is no zoom here. View. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. Here. No. No. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> zoom. Um, okay, so this is the uh, one of the functions we you have to define to 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 have the SPL support for your board. Uh, another function uh, is the board boot order, uh, which defines the which device you want to the order you want to boot devices. So I just want to boot on MMC, nothing else. So, but you, I think the, the, the structures is uh, created by this function, and I think you can specify six uh, possibilities. Uh, so, yes, you can uh, specify more MMC, but uh, as I said, uh, as it's, uh, uh, the, the goal is to boot faster. I don't want to several, uh, uh, boot support. Else, I prefer to start uh, the standard U boot and uh, let him uh, decide it for us. Um, another important function, which is not implemented here, but I will show you an example uh, later because I have other example. Uh, it's SPL start U boot. Uh, when you enable the Falcon mode, you can uh, specify. You, you, you can implement this function to say if you want to boot you boot the, the standard you boot or if you want to boot the kernel so by default if you return one you will uh, start you boot and if you return zero you will try to boot the kernel uh, so usually you can do this by just uh, having a gpio implementation so uh, i can show you uh, quickly because i have another example just here more complex example here, okay. So this is for the customer. So we have a function to, to get the recovery GPIO because this uh, supports several boards. So we have a function to get uh, a GPIO key and we just 
uh, set the GPIO uh, as, as an input, we read it, and if the button is pushed, we return one to boot you boot. So if you have a button for the recovery mode, you can just uh, you just have to implement this function with the GPIO, and you will be able to to start the kernel or you boot. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard you boot, I mean, uh, not the SPL. Uh, so this function is quite important, I, I think, for production, because uh, it's important to be able to, uh, in, in case of problem. Uh, up. Uh, and also you have this uh, other function, uh, which is called, uh, if I remember correctly, just before jumping to the Linux kernel. If you have a final step to do, you can do it now. So. I have another example uh, I will show you uh, later. But uh, for example, if you have to, to load a, a blob, I, I have to do it for my customer. So if you have to, to load the blob, you can do it here. So you can do it with FitMH. Hmm? Yeah, you should use a FitMH and define all your blobs in there and then have you boot just load them. So your your payload will be a fit image, right? Which will contain the no. kernel, it will contain the device tree, it will contain the blob, and then the fit image handling code will load the blob for you. Yes, in the case you have a fit image. It's not my case. You should use that because uh, yes, I know. you image it, <laughs> you image is legacy for ten years. Yeah, I see that uh, fit because when I do uh, the I work for the customer, it was on an old U boot version that mm. didn't manage fit image, so that's why I first I used. The, I just a uh, U image to, to boot, oh. and uh, but now I see that uh, fit image is the first choice in the uh, U boot code, in the SPL code, and uh, yes, yes. I, I, I think it's a better choice. But uh, for now it's not done. But maybe for the next conference I will use fit image. Excellent. I promise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, and so uh, the, so. To boot this board, the uh, 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 Linux kernel quickly with this board, this is the only piece of code I have to do. So it's, as you can see, it's really simple. So this is just to, because I, I was lazy, I don't want to define the debug. <laughs> so I just uh, change it, so. And then I also, uh, I will show you the dev config. Uh, this is the difference between the, um, the upstream uh, Riot board dev config and the new one with SPL. So as you see, you, you don't have to, to select a lot of things. So I selected the GPIO support. So you always, uh, for SPL, you have to define each time. Uh, for example, if the standard you would use GPIO, it, this is not a reason to not select SPL GPIO support because it's really two different uh, uh, part of the code, and so the SPL use the standard U boot functions, but sometimes there is some wrapper or some mechanism to use it differently. Uh, but so here uh, you see that I, I, I use a common function, uh, lib command lib generic. Uh, this is used for if I remember correctly, to, to be able to use FAT, because some, there is some dependencies, if I remember correctly. It's common functions, memset, uh, and yeah. that sort of stuff, uh, model, yes. that, yeah. So there and is... FAT is FAT. Yeah. And Literally. So I also define the MMC support, of course, because uh, I have an MMC, my kernel is on an MMC card. Uh, so, I def so the SPL is defined, uh, of, of, of course, in order to build it. Uh, the, the serial, so there is just a few, so you have uh, in the U-boot uh, menu config, you have a specific section for SPL, and you just have to enable what you want, and uh, it will work. Uh, yes, I also have the raw image support, which is not needed in my case, I think, uh, because I boot on the X, but uh, it's possible. And I, uh, we also see the SPL OS boot for uh, Falcon mode, and at the end, the, the last one, which allow to use the device tree uh, with the kernel. We, this is maybe not needed uh, with the fit image, I it don't is. know. Yeah, but uh, if you load direct, uh, directly a kernel, 
this is needed. Uh, yes. So it is, all, it is also needed with the fit. Yes, with fit. Is it, it is. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the mechanism. But is maybe it's, it's it's added automatically. Fit is container. Yes, uh, I know. Yes, but uh, if you if you saw like config SPL fit support, it could flip it on automatically. I don't know. Okay. So Possibly. yes. So but you need it uh, in all cases. You, you need yeah. it. If, yes. if you want to you you to you lo uh, to use a device tree you with your it. kernel, you need it. Yes. Yes. So uh, yes, it's a specification because you have also the the other for the standard you would uh, define, but it's not the same. Um, so I'm back to so this is uh, the new dev config, and I also define uh, a few uh, uh, a few variables. So the one to to specify where I want to add the device tree, uh, the kernel name, the, the device tree name. So as I said, you can put this in an environment. Uh, if you select the configuration, the adequate configuration, that's not my case. Uh, I add this one because I, in the past, I have some issues if I don't add this. Uh, but maybe it's fixed now. It's not fixed. Okay. That that's the remnant from the past and from that previous dis. Yeah, that's the remnant from the past and the previous discussion we had with uh, Robert Nelson. Yeah. Uh, basically. Uh, I don't really remember the argument he had, but it's something about having Qboot raw in in the SDMMC because he can then write the entire image, and because that's how they did it since forever. Uh, that's that's basically the whole thing. Yeah. So uh, this means you have to put Qboot at uh, offset 69 kilobytes because that's easy to I don't know remember or something. Yeah. Uh Okay, so but uh, yeah, so this is useful if you want to to boot uh, the the standard U-boot payload, uh, yeah. which is uh, the same uh, binary uh, than uh, the the SPL. My take on this is that we are in 2018 and we learned to use file systems for a while, so this should <laughs> just be yeah. blown away and everyone should store U-boot U-boot itself yeah. on a file yeah. system. I, I I agree, but uh, maybe an advantage is that. Uh, when you use the file system, you take time two months. Uh, ah, yes, but before the you boot payload, you you don't care. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah it takes time to mount. But what if your U boot grows behind? I don't know, yeah. two megabytes, and then it overwrites your boot partition because you update U boot and it's a little bit bigger. If you have it on a file system, you don't have that problem. It's not going to happen. The file system will tell you, okay, I'm out of space. But if you just write it directly into your SDMMC, well, you will just overwrite something. You will corrupt your file system, and that's it. Game over. Yeah. Okay, so uh, that's all with the configuration, so it's with the patch to add the support for the right board. So it's not the final patch, I will send it, uh, send uh, another one because there is some uh, things to, to fix, but uh, yes. And uh, oh, yes, you also have uh, another uh, callback that you can specify if you need to do some SPL board in it at some point. Uh, in the code, I think it's just before uh, initializing MMC, in my case, you can call it. So, you developers uh, give us a lot of callbacks to, to be able to do things. Uh, and I will show you that uh, that's good for some projects. Yeah, uh, so, the, I, I, I won't show this, this example because I have another one uh, for um, uh, an older U boot, but just to show that. Using uh, SPL and uh, optimize the boot time uh, is not so hard, and it's a few lines of code. So it's really it's it's not hard to do, and uh, for a project, I think you can have a lot of uh, good impact. For yes. So how much faster is it on that board? Next slide is coming. So, <laughs> so <laughs> I do the measurement uh, on the, with the old U boot uh, with the customer. So I have just a few numbers. Uh, we can discuss uh, if you want, if you want more, and I can if someone is interested of having uh, doing other tests, I can do it uh, after the the talk. Uh, but 
Many, uh, we boot the, the board in uh, 450, uh, 450 milliseconds instead of uh, 750 uh, milliseconds uh, with the standard U boot. So we do exactly the same thing. So uh, what we do is uh, in this, uh, mounting the MMC partition, uh, we, having a, uh, we have a, a splash screen for this project. So that's why uh, the amount can seem uh, big. But uh, I think we spend uh, 50 milliseconds to get the image, show it, display, and, um, and um, initialize all, all, all the video stuff. So, but uh, the standard you <coughs> do the same thing. So it's really compared Apple to Apple. We do exactly the same thing, and we earn uh, 300 uh, milliseconds, which is not. Did you enable caches? This really does, uh, this has significant impact. Um, enable level one and level two caching. Mm, Plus, to be honest, I, I, I don't ena know. But enable block caching if you're loading from file system. This again has a significant impact, especially on XFS. Okay, so I will check for the project. Uh, now it's done, but. Uh, but my suggestion would be to not do splash screen bootloader at all. Just do it in Linux because. If you show the splash screen in bootloader and then you switch to Linux, when you reinitialize the graphics hardware, there will be flicker and it will look yes. like I not nice. I completely agree with you, but the customers want, it, uh, want the, the splash screen to be displayed uh, really uh, soon before uh, loading the, the kernel and so on. So that's why and, uh, we display the splash screen uh, after 250 milliseconds. Uh, and we, we, we won't be able to do this uh, using uh, the kernel. Okay. So that's why we do this. But I agree that uh, it's better to just add the splash screen in the kernel. It is. I completely agree with you, but it's a customer request, so we do it. So fix the customer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's a good customer. We have good customers. Um, and uh, yes, and what I want to say also is that uh, what I said, so using raw binaries and uh, not uh, partitions uh, can uh, help us to, to, to earn time because uh, mounting the partition is around 100 milliseconds. So maybe with the cache it can be better, uh, so I don't know. Uh, but I, um, I will try it. Uh, try. We'll discuss it later because yeah. uh, it's interesting. But uh, yes, in this case it takes a long time, so. If you really want to boot faster, you, 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 um, it's better to use binaries directly. But it's less safe, I think. It is. Uh, to give you an idea about the caches, uh, we had a project where we had to clear the entire RAM because it needed ECC initialization. And uh, with caches enabled, it took two seconds to clear two gigabytes of RAM, or maybe it was four, I'm not sure. Uh, without caches, it, it took literally like half a minute so that's the sort of magnitude which yeah. you're looking at. Yeah, but uh, yes, so, but we see that, uh, okay, so the, the cache will improve a lot. Yeah. So thank you for the... Yeah, sure. Uh, for the plus, plus the block cache, which caches the uh, X inode entries in RAM is also really helpful. Mm. Okay. You don't do that many uh, block device accesses, which are expensive, yeah. especially on SDMMC. Yeah, okay. So. Uh, up. Uh, I will try to, so I will try to go faster. So the advantage and drawback. So the advantage of uh, using uh, Falcon mode is that it's faster. Uh, you can use U-boot features. So ah yes, I forget to show you the the other examples. Uh, so just a second. Up. I uh, will show you quickly. Uh, not HAB support, the splash screen support. So, uh, no, it's not splash screen support. <laughs> so, uh, just to let you know, uh, we, uh, we, in order to have the, the splash screen and the screen, the screen initialized uh, in the SPL, we had to, to, defi to, to add this, and uh, in order to have an SPL, uh, PWM, and a video uh, support. Uh, so this is completely uh, this is a U-boot 
uh, drivers used in SPL just by uh, adding uh, the two lines. So it's just to show that uh, it's sometimes it's really easy to to have the the, the, the features enabled in uh, in SPL. Uh, but you have to keep in mind that if you do this, the the the, the size code will be really bigger. And if you have a tiny device and you want to, to fit this in SRAM, sometimes it's impossible. And that's why uh, we need, uh, yes, because, uh, yes, we, we, so for example, for the IMXs, we need to, to bypass the SRAM and we directly uh, use uh, this uh, direct RAM address because we have the DCD that enabled the, the RAM directly. So we, we, we were able to, to define another address, else the, the size, the SPL max size was too too small to to add the, the splash screen and everything, but uh, that's a drawback uh, of uh, adding uh, more stuff. Uh, so I will that's try. Solo X, right? Sorry. That's I make six solo or solo X. Solo X. Uh, dual light. Dual light. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with the one core. Yes, it's dual light, but there is only one core. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you can use the U-boot feature. So as I saw, and uh, you can also jump to standard U-boot on demand if you with a GPIO. Three minutes. Okay. Uh, on demand, or uh, so don't using the function I show you uh, be, uh, just before, or also uh, on failure if you can't find the kernel, you uh, U-boot SPL will automatically try to to load the U-boot uh, image. So that can store uh, in uh, the raw MMC or in the partition. So if someone is interested uh, later to see a demo, I think I don't have the time to show it. But uh, you, you will be welcome, I, I, I can show it. Uh, and yes, drawbacks. You need some time to, when you don't know how U-boot works, that was my case when I, I, I just know uh, uh, small things uh, about you, but uh, when I started uh, working on this project, uh, I spent some time to understand how SPL works, everything, but it's, uh, I, I do this in less than a week, so it can be a lot for someone knowing it, but yes, that's mm -hmm. uh, I think one week for a project, it's not a lot, and uh, we earn a lot of boot time and the uh, customer was really happy uh, with this. So uh, it's a really nice feature. So I have a question. What do you yes. think about U-Boot and SPL and all that? What's, what's your personal opinion of the stuff you did? Oh, for um, my personal opinion about uh, Falcon mode and uh, for, I think SPL is a good thing uh, and should be the default mode for U-Boot. Uh. Uh, that's my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I, maybe you know it better. I think uh, it's really nice to have the small SP SPL and be able to boot the kernel quickly. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's what I like because I, to be honest, I like uh, you boot and the possibility to do script, to boot uh, everything every at every time. So but when you do a project, what you want is just to have a kernel, a device tree, boot, and forget about the uh, the bootloader. So I just want the bootloader like, to boot. How do you like the SPL documentation, for example? Sorry? How do you like the SPL documentation, for example, or the U-Boot documentation? That's why I want to do the talk, because I think the documentation, it's not really... It sucks, yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's light. So, but, but by reading the code, you understand. But the, the drawback is that you, I spend a week because the, there is a, some lacks in the documentation. So when I have bug, I, I have to debug everything by myself. Mm -hmm. So I think it can be improved. Yes. But uh, the, the, the feature is, is nice. So I like it. But. Uh, so I have another question. Uh, did you find some support for U-Boot Online? Like, did you ask someone, were they helpful to you? Uh, to be honest, I don't remember if I asked someone. Uh, because, uh, if, Yes, I just do it and uh, I compile. If I have an issue, I just look and it was okay. simple to, to fix it. So I don't need to, to, to ask questions. Uh, I don't remember, honestly, if I asked, but uh, okay, thanks. I think I don't try.
Thank you.